Barry here, and welcome to podcast two of this series of uh, my journey with God and cancer. Uh, so I meditated last night. I've been meditating since 1976. I found a meditation teacher, uh, just some guy over the radio, but there's something about his voice and what he offered drew me in, and I've been doing this same meditation basically ever since 1976. And it's a, uh, well, I might as well talk about the meditation before I get into the subject of impatience. Um, so the meditation is very simple, and uh, the teacher claims that it's Judeo-Christian based, and he claims that Jesus actually practiced this meditation. There's no way to know, of course. But it's a simple observation exercise where you observe yourself with your mind's eye. And I know that may sound a little controversial, but the mind's eye is a, a third eye, they call it. You don't see the world as you would visually with your regular eyes. You see the world in a spiritual way. And uh, there's, there are schools of thought that say that <clears throat> that opening the third eye is forbidden. I'm not sure how mainstream Christianity sees it, but obviously Jesus had his third eye open. He, he knew and saw everything. So when he says, you know, follow me, be like me, I'm wondering about if he meant including that third eye. Anyway, I digress. So, the meditation is simply sitting down quietly or lying down and letting your hands find a position either folded on your lap or hanging by your side or even in a prayer-like way. And then while you're in this position and make sure there's nothing going on phone-wise, beeper-wise, television-wise, while you're in this position... Let your mind focus, if you will, on your hands. You are going to be aware of your hands, sort of with your mind's eye, with your body, with your senses. You can bring awareness to anything, and in this case, you're bringing it to your hands, which are in a position that you choose. And just bring, bring your attention to your hands with your mind. And the result of this is that they will start to get warm. They will maybe tingle. This is a sign that you are bringing your attention to them because the blood is now flowing a little stronger. This is also possibly a help with poor circulation. If you meditated or gave attention to your feet, if you had the energy, you could actually get your blood to flow into your feet, maybe a little bit. So anyway, so you're meditating on your hands and obviously, or uh, without a doubt, um, thoughts will pull this whole process away from your attention to their attention. Thoughts will say, oh, I've got to be here. I've got to be there. What happened last night? Why did she say this? Why did he do that? blah, 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 past thoughts, future thoughts. They're always scamming around. Scamming, I invented a word. They're scamming around in your head. So the exercise, if you want to call it that, is to simply, you, with your concentration, with your minimal effort, bring your attention back to your hands, wherever they may be, on your lap, in prayer-like fashion, hanging by your side, bring your attention back to your hands. And when you are in that moment, that is where healing and light and God can reach you. God reaches you through your mind. And if your mind is off on somewhere else, God may be knocking, but you won't hear because you're lost in non-life Thought. Thought is, <clears throat> there's no life in thoughts. They feel like life, but there really is no life in thoughts. I don't know exactly what they are. 
their little bubbles, their little little pieces of flotsam and jetsam, their little pieces of confetti, whatever they are, there's a ton of them in there, and they have no life. You give them life, just like when you watch television. There's no life in the television. You create life in watching a television show. So this is kind of the same thing, where the thoughts, there is no life in the thoughts. You, <clears throat> excuse me, you give them life. So you don't want to give these non-entity things life. You want to give yourself life. By pulling your attention away from these distracting thoughts and back to your hands. And in a 20-minute period, if you can sit there long enough and be quiet for 20 minutes, you could be pulling your, your attention back to your hands and then it goes back to your, to your thoughts again and then back to your hands. You could be doing this in 20 minutes a hundred times. It's, it's, it's a continuous process. You're so used to the thoughts giving you direction that it'll be very difficult to at first to to not give them attention but if you want healing and if you want a stronger communication with your spiritual side you have to do this you have to do something to pull yourself away from thought thought obviously if you're sitting down doing your taxes if you're working if you're figuring out a problem that's the time for thought but not during a meditative period not while you're trying to relax all you, you the least you don't want lots of cluttering thoughts that's the last thing you want is a lot of clutter cluttering thoughts distracting you how can you relax they're demanded like little children they're demanding attention. Listen to me. Listen to me. Well, you have a choice. You can pull your attention away from these thoughts 
And if you're sitting and willing to do this meditative exercise, right there, you have to be willing and wanting to do it. If you don't want to do it, this will not work. It will not work. But if you want to do it, sit there and exercise these thoughts away from your being. And at the same time, give yourself more attention by grounding your, your own body with your hands. You're focusing on your hands. That's a grounding operation. You are, uh, you're not thinking of some mantra, which I don't aspire to. Mantras are another form of distraction. But that's, I'm not going to get into the philosophy of that. So your hands, though, are part of you. And if, you know, for some reason you don't have hands, obviously you could do another part of your body. But that's, that's what most people would use is hands. They're handy, no pun intended, or possibly one. So 20 minutes in the morning to start the day and maybe 20 minutes at night. This is just a ballpark, you know, thumb, what's that term? Thumb, uh, thumb, thumb figure. I don't know, what was that? Rule of thumb. And all this is going to do is give you the opportunity during the day as you exercised your mind in the morning during the day you might be pulled into thoughts and then you can, it's like accumulative energy. All of a sudden you may find yourself pulling away from thought in some conversation where you're, you're lost in judgment, you're lost in an analysis of what's going on in front of you, you're lost. There's so much power, excuse me, <coughs> there's so much power in not being lost in this, this false analysis, these these. False images, these false judgments, there's so much power not to be in that, that you can see clearly and you can speak clearly and, and honestly when you're not distracted with, with false information, which is thoughts. Very often thoughts are false information. They don't have to be, but often they are. And... It would be very nice to have some real information. And the real information doesn't come from thought. It comes from an, an, a source outside of thought. It's a light that shines. It shines on, on, a, on a situation and you can see clearly without your own judgment, without your own tainting of it. And it's, it's like, it's, it's a miracle. It's beautiful. And it's comforting. But if your ego can't stand the thought of thought not being your God, then this won't work. Your thoughts are so distracting and so powerful that if taken to their ultimate destination of some people wanting to be a demigod or a, you know, a, a, a total control freak, that's it's all thought it's all ego based thought and if that's your path that's your path I don't judge but if you're listening to this and you want some some alternative this could be it
Lord, you've taken all the hurt and shame Every time I've called your name Forever will my life proclaim Your faithfulness to me Through it all Okay, so um, the on on the same topic, it's kind of on the same topic about meditation and sitting down and being quiet and pulling your attention away from thought is the the subject of impatience and faith. The teacher I follow, I'm not going to give his name because I don't. Uh, he, he is no longer teaching and his sons have taken over his practice of meditation and it's, it's totally lost. They've destroyed it. So I'll just leave it there. But impatience, according to my teacher is a sign that faith is not enacted. If you have impatience, you lack faith. Now impatience is not necessarily, um, being so patient in a line at the grocery store or in the DMV that you, um, you know, that's not a spiritual impatience. That's just, that's just the, the, the nitty gritty of life. We have to wait in long lines or in traffic. Patience is beneficial. So you don't flip out, but I'm talking more of spiritual impatience with other people. Um, with your wife, with your husband, with your children, if you have children, with with a specific friend that drives you crazy. If you kind of stuff it and pretend to have patience, if you are really raging inside, but don't show it, if you've mastered that technique, you have not 
mastered anything except destroying your own soul by doing something like that. Patience, there is no rage. There is no, no falsity. It's pure. It's, 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 it's an energy that never, never lets you down. It never leaves you once you've found it. It's like a light that continually shines. And the faith part comes in knowing and believing that your own impatience doesn't get anything done any quicker. But faith without impatience says that everything will happen in its own time. There's a big difference between your time and the time the universe and reality decides things are ready. And there's this saying, you know, good things comes to those who wait. There's a lot of mockery with that. But honestly, it's true. Good things come to those, to those who wait. And good is not necessarily a materialistic benefit. It could, it could be a step toward your own salvation from this world. You know, being caught up in this world, being successful in this world. You know, you've heard this probably from a million philosophers. It's, it's not what it's cracked up to be. When you finally reach the top of anything, you find out. It's the journey. If you've made a wonderful journey out of, out of a goal, it's all the people you've met. It's all the lives you've touched that have touched you. And if you reach your goal in that way, then you'll be blessed many times over. But if your goal is to, you know, uh, damn the torpedoes full speed ahead and you, you go blindly into success and ambition you're going to destroy not only a lot of other people, but you're going to destroy a lot of your own integrity and essence by going off and doing a, a uh, run for your life, run for your money, run for success. All right, so you've heard all this stuff. But it's true. It's real. You know, if you talk to people who have done that, they're, they're just not happy. I, and, and I'm repeating which you've heard already a hundred times. But the goodness that comes from not going that path is unimaginable in a good way. It there gives you peace. It gives you, even if you're suffering from a health issue like I am, you don't worry so much about the health issue. If I was impatient with my cancer, if I took the chemo route or if I, was angry or any any of the negative attributes that humans would have when they've been given a a diagnosis of cancer. If I was any of those, I wouldn't be able to talk. I wouldn't be able to to think or be or do all the wonderful things I'm doing right now, even with cancer, because I would have lacked faith and I would have lacked uh, the patience that I need to trust that God has his own timeline and however long I'm supposed to be here, that's how long I will be here. If it's to do more podcasts, fine. If it's not, fine. If it's to play in my band, fine. If it's not, fine. It's not really up to me and I'm not passing the buck and I'm not dodging my own responsibility. What I'm saying is I truly, truly believe I'm on a path that is not that that is being guided and it's listen i'm a very rational person aside from being so wacky and crazy I have, i've been all these years i am rational and i i'm telling you this is real stuff this is not churchy stuff and i use the term churchy because uh, a lot of churches turn people off to this sort of thing uh, I hope I'm not misquoting Jesus when he said, many will come in my name and lead many astray. And that is such such the case. When we can see people who are not, not loving, not spiritual, but 
making a lot of money off of uh, other people suffering and and uh, I'm not going to go down that path. I'm not a philosopher here. So faith, faith, the path of faith, especially with a terminal disease such as cancer, has been my choice. And heck, um, so far, I haven't been disappointed and I see things and experience things I would have never have seen before because I'm slowed down. I'm, I'm, I'm non-vibrating. I'm, I'm not vibrating at a breakneck pace. I'm, I'm, I'm still, I'm in, the, in the, 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 the eye of the hurricane. That's the place to be where everything is rushing around you, but you're calm. You're in the center. And the only way you can get there, at least as far as I'm concerned, is to pull away from distraction and thought for just 20 minutes a day even. If you practice pulling away from those things that distract you, including television and all the cell phones, everything, you've got to put those away for a while, a little bit, a little bit. And if you keep saying, you know, I'll wait, I'll do it, I'll work on this someday. Well, someday never comes. And when it does come, it may be not of your own choice in the way it comes. That's kind of scary because if God is knocking at your door trying to tell you to do something and you ignore it, by God, God's going to have his way one way or the other. And it would be better if you could do it in your time while you could be willingly do it and have all your faculties or all of your body parts or whatever. It's better that way than if God has to knock you off, to knock you off your, your butt and make it his way. Either way, it's going to happen. You can't avoid the reality of, of who you really are. Patience lets things unfold. There's a, it's an unfolding. And it happens when you least expect it. Some, some benefit from being patient or some benefit from, from a change that you've created by being patient with somebody else. Some change, some benefit will just happen automatically when you least expect it. And then is when you start believing in in patience and faith. And the more, the more you practice being in that, in that realm, the more it happens. It's, it's, and then the more faith you have, but you got to start. It's as put as it's a mustard seed of faith. Isn't that what it said in the Bible? A mustard seed of faith. Um, but you got to plant it and you got to water it and you water it best by learning patience. Patience is um, like a, it's like an energy. It isn't, it doesn't take any will. It doesn't take any effort. That's the wonderful part about it. When you suppress impatience and you call that patience, that's not patience. That's, um, that just causes anxiety and, <clears throat> and stress within your body. But true, real patience is, is a river ever flowing never stops. <laughs>